Oh, this is uh, wrapped up. <laughs> All right, welcome to episode 16 of the Laced Up Podcast. I'm here with my co host. I'm Freaky Phil, of course. It's your boy Bola. Oh, it's Bentley. What's going down, folks? Steph here. And we got a very, very special guest. I'm going to let uh, Bentley introduce our, our guest today. Oh, he put me on the spot. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All the time. Hey, man, I got my man Les here. Uh, you know, Les is doing, doing some big things right now. Just had a, what, an EP release. Yep, yep, yep. Just opened the store. Yep, yep. Hey, so we have a lot of talk about it, Les. So, hey, man, welcome to have you here with us. Yeah, I appreciate y'all having me, man. Thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. So we're going to jump right on into it. Uh, let's talk about the store a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what, what made you open up the store, and where did that idea come from? Man, well, we had, um, started, a, I, you know, I had the brand Steak and Shrimp for a minute. And um, my boy, Georgie, my business partner, he was always like a silent partner in Steak and Shrimp. And, you know, that's my dude. He, he always took care of me with the graphics and all that stuff and shot my videos. So I definitely always wanted him to be my partner and stuff. And we did that since, like, man, I want to say 2013. We had that going on. And it was successful. We made a lot of money. It was merch, whatever. Like, I, I was making money off that before I ever even got a dollar off streaming or any kind of wow, album sale wow. and shit like that. Cause at the time it didn't really, it was still like transitioning from free mixtapes to, yeah. you know, streaming uh, services okay. and all that stuff. So the merch, man, I'll never forget, I came off tour one time and I was, man, broke, broke off tour. And like, it looks like it's the shit cause I was on a tour bus with big <laughs> rappers and all yeah, that. Yeah. But you know, dudes just don't know how stuff work when you coming up. And I came home in the red mm. and I was on the road and I was in different cities and dad had, hadn't really hit the craze yet, mm -hmm. but I had seen him. So I was like, well, let me do some dad hats for Steak and Shrimp when I get back. And yeah. that shit went so crazy, like, damn, that yeah. saved my life. I know it sounds nuts, but like, we made like six figures off dad hats in like four months. Wow. wow. That's, and, um, that's, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, for real. So from there, I just, you know, I, we got into the merch real heavy and then we were still doing the music and then, you know, everything kind of caught up with the streaming and shit. It just after a while, it's like Steak and Shrimp, we just got so known as like, a music thing mm -hmm. it was just kind of like we wanted to do something separate so we had came up with some shirts it was it was still under steak and shrimp and it was called diy it was like on some do it yourself because that's just kind of like our whole attitude we mm -hmm. like to just you know do our own shit you cuss on your house yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you good right, yeah, i've been, I been doing shit with bun all good. week yeah. some of it like i was on mtv last night they're like oh you can't say that and i was smoking weed they're like oh you gotta put that out I'm like, right. no, right, no but um <laughs> Yeah, so we did we did some shirts that said it was like some gorilla shit. Like I put Master P on the T with no permission and like Jay Z and mother yeah, just a bunch yeah. of like entrepreneurs that did their own shit. Mm -hmm. And then I put OJ with the glove. Of course that was kinda nuts, but <laughs> it was just crazy to say do it yourself. I remember all that shirt saying. went crazy though. Yo, we sold yeah. a ton of those. So I was like, yo, we was in Japan right when we were coming up with the idea for the shirts and I was like, Man, let's call the brand DIY, DIY And Georgie was like, Yeah, that's dope, man, but that shit's gonna get caught up in like, you know, if you type DIY into Google, yeah. you're gonna mm -hmm. get a yep. billion results. Yeah. Right. Of like, you know, what's yeah. going, you know, all these different shit, even YouTube, whatever. So we were just in, you know, in Japan, I was doing some shows out there with uh little Kiki and just fucking around. Mm -hmm. And he had hit me with this idea. He was like, Man, what about Dios? Did it ourselves? Of course, ourselves ain't really OS, but we made it work and then it had a double meaning in Spanish that mm -hmm. means God. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, we, we, you know, religious guys, we, you know, God fearing dudes and we keep that in our hustle. And then on top of that, we do do everything ourselves and we want to do something that represented, you know, everybody like just how you guys doing this and, and yeah. the podcast, everybody who's hustling and getting to it. And um, we started the brand Dios. We're supposed to launch the brand in March, and as we know, March 2020 yeah. Yeah. had other plans for everybody. Right. So sure. yep. it was it was like a lot of shit got canceled. I had tours, all kind of stuff. Man, I had a tour that started April 18th. All that shit out the window. Oh, and, um, damn. Was that the Mario? Hmm? Was that the? Oh no, no, I was a, no a tour, like a music oh, tour. A tour. I was about to go on, and then yeah, and then we had to then you know Georgie was doing the tour, yeah, and, and, yeah. and that's still coming though. That's still is happening. it? Yeah, no, that's still happening. Is yeah, there but, a date? Um, uh, not yet. Is is we got to tiptoe around. So we gotta hand, we gotta, <laughs> I've been so asking around. Copyright. Like, oh, I saw you know, that. We gotta I make like, sure everything. Yeah, we just making sure everything right so we don't get sued. Yeah. But hey, um, think, thinking about shoes real fast. Yeah. You, you were talking about the merch. When you're designing merch, is any thought of like what shoes is coming out or the colorway? Is any thought? Man, we did that for a second with the steak and shrimp shirts. 
where we were working with this certain distributor and um it was cool we ended up with a lot of extra shirts right you know what i mean yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. and of course they would sell when we would go do shows and shit but yeah, at the you know there was a time when like everybody would come out with shirts immediately to match whatever Jays matching, came out matching, that Saturday. Yeah. Like, I even worked for some stores before I started rapping. I would be in there selling the shirts. Like, oh yeah, yeah these shirts we made specifically for, for those shoes, yeah. Jays or whatever. But now nah, I didn't really like. It was a style thing, of course. And sometimes like I would make shit that I like, and I would forget that I'm an artist in Texas. Yeah. And <laughs> I'll be and it would sell. Like I would always sell out, but it wouldn't move as quick as I would like to because yeah. I like I said, I forget sometimes I went other places. I've seen we all know how it is. Sometimes mm -hmm. you go other places to see other things. Like most of us, everybody here is pretty on point, you know, right. in this room on fashion, but everybody that listens to me, you know, the dude in Corpus Christi, Texas that, that listens to me and Slim Thug right. and mm -hmm. he yeah. might not he'll hit man, look, I get comments all the time. What the fuck you got on, bro? That's not real <laughs> that's not real nigga outfits, bro. Your shorts, <laughs> your shorts are too short. Your shorts are above your knee, bro. Like, you like, know what is I'm like, I just be explaining like, dude, I, I don't do this. I don't want y'all to date me. You know what I mean? Like, I understand I'm not I don't have the tall T on and everything no more. But, but yeah, man, it's just I would design stuff that I like mm -hmm. and eventually people kind of you know, it just became a thing for people to start dressing better. Yeah. yeah. So and then everybody and I remember tall T less from the office. Yeah, you was there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> shit, I had to wear a tall T. I was like 260. <laughs> <laughs> shit, but yeah, man. It, you know, we were just making stuff and grinding it out. But yeah, we came up with Dios. And um, we got blessed with the store, to be honest with you. That was a spot that we've been trying to get for like two years. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, and fortunately, Corona gave us the opportunity right. to get in there because that person had to get out. Mm. And uh, we were able to get a good deal and got into the spot. And we did like a soft grand opening back in November. Mm. And when they cleared us out, man, so we were I was calling, that day I was calling Mello. I was like, Mello, hey, pick pick me up a, a, a hat. Because I, I hit yeah. you too. Yeah. I said, hey, let's save me a hat, something. Dog. Like, do yeah. something. Today. I ain't gonna lie, my phone be off on drop days, bro. <laughs> like, I, it's no, I, drop days and show days, it's like I never had, I don't know, I never knew I knew so many people. Yeah. <laughs> like, I be like, oh, shit. We out, boy. Yeah, man. I be trying to help. He's like, fuck. Hey, speaking of shows, are you? How, what, what goes into you picking out an outfit for a show? Like, are you thinking about shows? I would be so first? surprised. So, look, when you go on tour, bro, number one, this is like the outfit. Like, sweats, t shirts, yeah, whatever. You want to be comfortable. Then, number one, the way we, I'm, I'm from a different part of rap. Like, I'm from the underground lyrical i guess like rappers like you know me people i work with currency freddie Gibbs, big crit whatever these are dudes i be on tour with mm -hmm. therefore like these niggas is beast i gotta be on stage myself for 45 hours rapping mm -hmm. i mean not 45 hours 45 minutes to an hour rapping acapella no hype man no background vocals like we put in work mm. you sweating yeah. So you ain't grabbing your illest shit like <laughs> Gibbs yeah. go out there no shirt in the chain spit will go out there white tee and then maybe a jacket overtake it. Me, I'm like white tee or, you know, car Carhartt tees, like stack up on those, go out there. Yeah, you kind of pick your shoes a little bit, but even on tour, you on a bus with 13 niggas, so there's only so much space. Yeah, You'll probably get like, I always do one suitcase full of shoes, so I just try to pick the stuff that like, you know how it is, there's certain specific silhouettes and different shoes that kind of go with a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. you want to like just yeah. pick the most universal thing that right. you can get. And maybe like one or two crazy things, but you can't really go too crazy because if you wear like your crazy pair one day, you, then you wear it three yeah, days later, yeah. like, okay, my nigga, you, how many times you gonna wear them? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you gotta kind of like find that neutral pair of shoes that you could wear a lot on stage and stuff like that. Like Jordan 1's is usually my go-to on stage. Yeah. They grip because sure. you go on stage, people been, you might have an opening act that was throwing water. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. They, they'll have like fucking wet shit all over the place <laughs> and everything. Like you just, and I move a lot during performance. So, you know, I like to wear ones. You got a little wrist, I mean, ankle support. And, yeah. You know, like it's, it just is a good shoe. Like, you know, ready got, for everything. I got a question for you. You travel a lot now. Um, yeah. Due to you, you rapping and stuff. So, <laughs> so, so what's your favorite place to visit? And also, where were you at? And so and 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 these people knew your lyrics and you were surprised like damn they know my shit out here, man. Um, I was blessed, bro, because being in Texas and being underground for so long, mm -hmm. I was always tricked into thinking not that many people fucked with me because I was so different from everybody in the mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. But then when I got on the tour, I was like, oh, like every city I went to, everybody knew my words. Wow. Cause I, and then I was set up in a in a good way because I went on tour with niggas that 
either I had music with or like I, they fans already knew about me. Like right, when I, right. my first yeah. tour was Big Crit. That's the first person I like. Period. Before I knew Slim, anybody I've rapped, that's the first person I ever shared vocals with on the record. Wow. Before anybody knew who either one of us was. So our fans always messed with both of us. So, we, you know, that How was How did easy. y'all connect? That's crazy. Uh, just rapping on blogs and being obscure artists, like mm. back yeah. in 2010. You got know you, what I mean? Got just you. like, okay. no, we just, we clicked up together. And then, like, currency, of course, like his fans was my fans. So, Opening up for him, it's like, yo, my people are there. So they knew, like, I, New York was the one that got me. We was at, I think, BB King's, and mm-hmm. I was like, all right, let me see what New York's about, because I heard all these horror stories. I remember Chris said he got booed. Mm-hmm. I you heard know, that things too. like that happened. And then, now nah, I came out there, first song, they was going nuts. They knew everything. They was happy to see me. So it was cool. It, it was like, I've been blessed, man. I never really had that. Now, I have had the whole go on stage, be nervous, nobody know who, who you were, but that all happened out here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That all happened here. Like Slim did some wild shit to me one time. We, he, <laughs> we were doing like the dub car show. Mm-hmm. I just like was with him like maybe for a couple of months, and I never forget we was backstage, and you could tell this was when the dub car show was nuts. Like it was twenty thousand people out there. Yeah, I'm just standing on stage. I thought it was just going. He was going to do his thing, and he gave me the mic. He was like, "Go ahead." I was like, what the fuck you mean? Go ahead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he was like, then my song started, he started laughing. And I was like, nigga, you about to fuck over me. You know the fuck I am, like, what the right hell? on the spot. But I went there and did it. And the motherfucker was looking at me like, bitch, who is you? But, yeah. you know, it was a learning thing, though. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. After you go out in front of 20,000 people who don't know who you are and do your thing, you don't really care no more. Right. Like, yeah, like, right, right, cool. Sense. I know how this feels to have a bunch of being, you know, being stared yeah, at like, right. who the fuck are you? Mm-hmm. So like, cool. Yeah. You know? Right. So, so you mentioned that you, you know, you've been around a lot of different rappers. You performed yeah. and, you, and you talked about the shoes and everything. Is there someone that you've been around? You'd be like, yo, their shoe collection is crazy. Did they bring something around? Oh man. It's a, I know Currency got some shoes. I was about to say like Spitter, you know, oh, yeah. I think man, I respect definitely. Spitter's collection a lot because he just has like the, he gets the good shit. He doesn't get everything. You know how there's some people try yeah. to grab, like get yeah. in the shoes and they just try to grab everything. Mm-hmm. Like Spitter has like everything that matters. Bola. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they, they be going like, to everything, the bro. <laughs> Literally that's everything. Bola, bro. Yeah, that's a whole lot of that's Bola, bro. It's between the two of y'all. Yeah, Bola, I don't know. I get everything, bro. It's like the three Bola, of y'all, bro. though. The three of y'all. All three of y'all be trying to get everything. Man. But now, nah, yeah, no, Spitter's collection is nuts. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, Bun B. Oh, yeah. yeah I'll speak more on that later Ridiculous. when we pull some stuff out. But, yeah, Bun is like the I OG. Know, I don't even count him. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, hard to. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, if you count like Spitter, you gotta count Bun too, because Spitter OG in the game that's super plugged too. Right. Yeah, yeah, he I mean, like, yeah, like he everything is. that he wants shows up at his front door. You Spitter know what I mean? That, uh, but he had to pay dudes to do that though, because Spitter spent like he's. Now, I always got on Spitter because he weighs such a small size. It's oh, unfair. Yeah. I think it was like a seven. Right. Oh so wow. It was like, what? I, yeah, it's like crazy. Like he's lucky. I remember he had a pair of Iversons on one time. I said, man, what size? shit? Yeah, no, dude has a small. Yeah, he has a small. Like, but I mean, shit. It works for him, you know. You can I get have I have Spitters. Uh, was it the Reebok class? It was a Reebok yeah, C. Yeah, you did the Reebok C. Yeah, yeah, he did the. Uh, yeah, that's what it was. The club. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have those. Those laces are. Crazy. He just came out with some babes too. I think. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He came wow. out with some babes. That's like, crazy. La- was it last year? It was yeah, yeah, like, last year. in the fall or something yeah. like that. Or it, it was during the pandemic, yeah. I mm-hmm. believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. but um, who else has a good collection? Maxo Cream. Mm. Maxo has some shit. Mm. Um. I haven't seen his collection personally, but just on YouTube and shit, just on some Texas shit. Mm-hmm. Chase B probably has one of the hardest collections oh, yeah. I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. And Mr. Rogers. DJ oh, Mr. Yeah. Rogers. Yeah, right? yeah we can't like, dog, Rogers shit is nuts, yeah. actually. Like, mm. for real, for real. And Drano right. has a lot of fucking shoes. That's another yeah. person that people ain't going to know <laughs> who we're talking about, <laughs> but, but Drano. <laughs> like, Definitely. yeah, he just, he's a, yeah. Drano's ridiculous. Like, yeah, he has everything. Sure, yeah. Hey, Rogers is one of those classic silhouette people's though. No, right, yeah, yeah. Right, seems I really like Rogers really collection is A1. Like, yeah. Like, he's like spitting. He has the good shit. Like, not everything, just the shit that kind of Rogers is Air Max head, too. Right? We need yeah. to have him on. Yeah, y'all need to have him up here for sure. For so sure. you um talked about like traveling and everything in Japan and like in Asia. Did you tap into like the sneaker scene out there? What was it like out there? Because, you know, it's... We went to like the spots like Worm and, yeah. you know, all the, the, the cool spots out there. It was dope because like all those dudes were fans of us. Yeah. It was cool seeing like their whole 85 collection. That Actually, in Japan, a few stores I went to, they have 85s on deck. They collect the shit out of Jordan That's 1 from 85. Yeah. Like, it's crazy to see them. They keep them caged up and everything. Yeah. But, nah, it's cool. Like, man, Japan's just a whole nother world. They, it's mm-hmm. just weird to be out there 
and just see like everyone so fresh. Yeah. Mm. Like yeah, everybody. We, dog, we were in the airport in Canada catching a connecting flight and there was another flight going to another part of Japan, not Tokyo. The whole entire line, I wish I could find a video. It was old people, right? It was like just regular middle aged to old people. When I tell you the entire line had on heat, like not, <laughs> not, I not believe it. I believe Bro, it. I'm talking about not like, like, oh, now, nah, like, you know, an old dude with some 11s on. No, like, you see an old lady with like yeah. some wow. new balances that yeah. cost like 1200 yeah. like, just yeah. like chilling. Like, and they all look good. It's not like yeah. they just have them on, like, the fits is just. Yeah, it's like everything is right, but it's mm-hmm. like it's so fire because they're not trying. You can mm-hmm. tell it's like there's some effortless shit. Just that's just how they the carry culture. themselves. Right. Yeah, go yard bags, all that. Yeah. It's like mm. everything. It seemed like when somebody's out here is trying, they were just doing it, and right. it's mm-hmm. cool right. to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you ever? Oh, go ahead. Go is, ahead there, is there like a lot of fake stuff out there? When you were like, I didn't come across it. That shit's expensive. In mm-hmm. Japan, everything costs more because it sells quicker. Yeah. Like I was out there like I'm gonna grab some Yeezys just on some random shit and I was like the Yeezys cost like a hundred bucks more just like retail because it was just an island so yeah. you know it's like everybody lines up at the same places and just like I was saying everybody's hip out there you got old yeah. people wearing these shoes mm. so everybody's lined everybody up to get favorite. everything so it wasn't as access- accessible as you would think it would be like when, when I went back the second time with Bun it's like we didn't really just you don't really just go out there and clean up on shoes. It's mm-hmm. not like the 90s when it's just a bunch of shit that nobody's seen before. Mm-hmm. We all got the internet now, so if something drops in Japan, yeah, people yeah. got it out here already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. You thinking like that stuff be knockoffs? I was, I mean, I've heard now, stories. You definitely see, stories. See, the thing is, I've never heard of Japan. Japan is not the place you go for knockoffs. Yeah. Right. Oh, China, 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 China is. China is. You go, yeah, China, China is. Yeah, Japan is on a whole other level. Yeah, yeah. Japan is more like, yeah, it's just You can get anything real. in China. Yeah, yeah. China. So you can tell I don't wear fakes. I don't even know where you get them. Yeah, yeah, China. There you go. There you go. Have you ever been in a room with an artist that you looked up to as a kid or something and and did you catch yourself being starstruck at any point? Have you? Uh, only, man, I met Pimp C before I ever was like, when I was just trying to rap, like before oh, wow. I even did anything. And that was the most nervous I've ever been around a nigga in my life. <laughs> like, Cause that was my, that's my favorite rapper. Like, okay. you know, and I mean, of course, Bun, UGK, but it, you know, that, you know, we have a relationship now. Mm-hmm. But I mean, even when I first met Bun, man, you know, it, it's weird. All my dudes I looked up to most too were Texas rappers. Mm-hmm. Cause I mean, I always looked up to what I could see. Yeah, besides yeah. Jay Z, you know what yeah. I mean, and Jay Z just like that's different, you know. Jay's like an icon, yeah. But I mean, these dudes are icons to me too. So mm-hmm. you know, it's crazy being around them. But shit, I've been around these dudes for like ten years now. But it was weird, like being in the studio rapping in front of Slim Thug the first time. That was kind of like. What the fuck? But then I heard him go in the booth, and then he fucked up. <laughs> and then right. I, even then I've been up. around like all the greats, and I see like my thing was like I thought you couldn't fuck up. Like I yeah. thought you had a one take. I grew up listening to Jay Z and Wayne, and now it's all about one take, Jake, mm-hmm. and all that yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. So I was like, shit, I got a one take everything. And then I was in the studio, and I just seen a nigga fuck up like fifty times. Like, oh, it's cool. It's okay. I was in there still one taking my shit just off, you know how. I, just how I made myself be able Mentally to work at the time. Yeah, so you yeah. Are, Everybody's yeah. like, oh yeah. shit, he's the shit. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Know what I'm <laughs> like, fuck That's it. <laughs> Man. So as we talk about like all these greats and the influence that they've had, do you feel like the sneaker game has changed from influencing from like artists to now more like a sneaker influence kind of predicts what mm-hmm. we want to wear and how we want to wear it? What you mean? Like, this is more about the sneakers. Is it, is it more about like not artists anymore? Now more so like Nike putting it in on like somebody that's cool in a tabloid, and then that makes everybody want to go buy it. I think it's a balance of all that because I think like rappers be flogging and faking too about the shoes they like and get sent. Like I'm like, yeah, well, you wasn't up on that. Like, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I'll be looking right. at you, I'm like, ah, right, you get seated everything, you lucky <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, a little envy there. I'm like, I'm kind of yeah. hating. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean. Man, it's such a crazy game right now, bro. I was just talking, so I was at the spot, I was at Proper a second ago. We were just talking about how many shoes came out at the end of the year. You know yeah, what I mean? It was just kind of, and how many it shoes aren't dropping. coming out right now. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's like it just stopped. Like yeah. the year yeah. ended and it just stopped and there's like a gap and then like some shit started dropping at the end of this month. But I mean, it seems like now just the shoes, bro, because they could put something on sneakers and Everybody will hate it, and then it comes out and sells out, and then everybody loves it. Yeah, right. we seen that happen yeah. with the Union Arm um, Force. Right, you know that was like that. Everybody was like, "Fuck oh, this shoe! I hate this shoe! Never buy this shoe!" That shoe mm-hmm. came out sold out immediately, and 
probably like one of the shoes of the year last year. <laughs> yeah. That's you. I hated them. He, but see, that's he said he hated them. That's I told you to make me have that question. It's like that. That's a separate entity now that drove that whole demand. Like I mm -hmm. remember when like it was like oh Jordan drove a demand. Like yeah. I've never seen it before where you know there's a store or oh, there's yeah, like a, or, you know what mm -hmm, I mean something separate mm -hmm. than we've ever. How many people have ever been to like the store union? Yeah, yes. yeah, no, sure. I've how been there. How many people know yeah. the store? Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of people, people don't know. A lot of people don't know. They you don't even know as a black black man, right? Um, yeah, Chris Gibbs. Like, it's, right. it's, it's, so, you know, I mean, that's like well, that's the reason I had to ask that question is it's just like it's not driven by when like when we came up. You know, yeah, right? it was not Jordan, Jordan or like yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. It's not like the actual. It's not about the actual athlete. A athlete, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Is is more sure, about even the Fresh Prince. It's like the story. Like the story behind the sneaker now is almost what sells it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what everything, even like brands, like I think that's why we do well. We have a little story behind it and mm -hmm. it people attach themselves to it. I mean, of course, hype though with, with clothes though, it's still gonna be the ultimate seller of yeah. clothes yeah. and shoes. So 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 you told that story of um you coming home, you being in the red and uh you selling these dad hats. How was that how did that make you feel that you you figured something out on the road? And you you stumbled upon uh, a gym pretty much. How did that make you feel? Like, oh my God, like this. Is it was dope. Amazing. I mean, I man, look, I tell people all the time. I was I'm a regular dude, so yeah. Like even to this day, I still have to pinch myself. I'm not the biggest rapper in the world at all, but I'm in a position to like, as far as making money, it's kind of easy, mm. but, and that's a blessing. But yeah, you know, because sure. I've, I've I've done it at a time where it was impossible to make money. Like you yeah. know what I mean. So it, it's definitely like we paid. I paid the fuck out my dues. Like for real, because like the first five years I was in the game, you got Drake giving out free mixtapes. So how the fuck am I gonna charge you? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So how you gonna get anybody to buy into you when mm -hmm. the biggest dudes in the game is giving away free music? Right, right. You know what I mean. So, and you had to rely on shows, and that's like yeah, hopefully you get booked. You know what yeah. I mean. So, yeah, it was definitely dope figuring something out. But at the same time, yeah, we figured it out in those first couple of months. But then after that, everybody figured it out. Ah, and then yeah. it got oversaturated, and that's when you have to like adjust to the game and figure out new ways to get money. Because I mean, everything gotcha. like I remember there was no merch. Like I was like the only dude out here with a merch thing with steak oh, and shrimp, sure. and yeah. then it turned yeah. into everybody had a brand. Right. Because like I was the first dude out here, and I'm, I hate being like I was the first. No, I'm not. I don't mean it like that. But it just they'll even say I was like one of the guys that I didn't create. A, I never sold a T-shirt that says less. Right. Yeah. I never put my face on the shirt unless yeah. it was like a, a like something with the album cover. And we never called that steak and shrimp. We would just call that album merch. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never tried to sell anybody a t shirt that has my name, face, likeness, or any of that. I always wanted to be something separate that you could kinda associate with my music, but there was a lot of I remember it would be rappers wearing steak and shrimp and didn't know who the fuck I was. Right. Yeah. Damn. But wouldn't even answer the phone if I needed a verse or nothing. They never heard <laughs> yeah. of me. Like, right. you know what I mean? But <laughs> but they'll be on M T V like the whole sweatsuit. Oh wow! That's like, cool. I take that. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Take that like, money. So, yeah. How you and Mo Bola know each other? Cause I've been hearing your name from Bola for like and so long. Bola for forever. <laughs> what, U of H. Yeah, we just know so many people. <laughs> yeah, we got like a lot this. of friends, man. A lot of friends just know each other, and that's how me and I remember meeting Les at. I swear it was the office. I ain't gonna lie, Les was out of there. Yeah, <laughs> I was like loaded, wasted, high, or something. Les was out of there. If I was at the office, I for sure was out of there. <laughs> you I was lived, out of there. I lived another life, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's been years, so. Yeah. What man. year? What year was that? Like oh nine. Shit, office had to be oh nine oh eight. I was gonna say the yeah. office is four kids. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> before, before, before three kids. Before kids. <laughs> So did y'all did y'all have any other questions for uh, Les before we get into his sneakers that he bought us? Before we get into that one, most memorable shoe release ever. Most mm, memorable shoe release one. ever. When I skipped school, I was gonna say my age in high school for them Space Jams. Mm. Space Jam. I'm sure y'all like y'all. Oh yeah, y'all mm. gotta remember the Space Jam. I mean, yeah. Everybody has an eleven story. Yeah, it's, like, it, it was. Right, right, right. Right. I, I, was I, we cool were young. Gray. Yeah, our age. Mine was like, a cool gray. I skipped. That was yeah. Yeah. Eleven. Cool was, was eleven was the dangerous. move. Like that was yeah. always the biggest release that oh, I yeah. remember. Was always eleven. Like from when I was growing up, it was definitely the eleven. Yeah. That whole retro eleven oh, era. Yeah. Like for sure, for sure. I remember saying the line, a good line for them twelves too. The black and white twelves. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That line at the Galleria. I was at Foot Locker. Get mm. them playoff twelves, mm. and then that when the line. Space Jams came back out, I think that was oh nine. Uh -huh. There's a video of me and Rogers like skipping that whole line at the gallery. <laughs> <laughs> so like, and people looking at it, like, "Fuck y'all!" Like, like I'm sad. Yeah, they were I mad. But they were doing an event at uh, 
I think it was when they first opened the House of Hoops downstairs at the Galleria. Mm -hmm. And I remember Bun was like, he had like these Space Jam Air Force Ones that was like in a case that he was showing and stuff. So mm. that was pretty cool. I think everybody has, has a story about a pair of Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Sure. Is, does y'all, is everybody still rocking Levis? Like, how do you feel about them now? I don't. I wore some last year. I wore some last I year. I don't rock them and I'm and I, telling myself I need a rock pair. Yeah. I don't like them anymore. It's yeah. weird. I just, I, 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 I fell like out of love. I, 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 I had to force myself to wear like the cool grays like to mm -hmm. dinner with, with my wife. Like one Those day. are the best ones to me though. Yeah. Like, after great. time is they like, come out, they, they come yeah. out this year. Yeah, they come yeah, out this year. Yeah, they come out this year. I might grab Yeah, those are. Yeah, they re-releasing this year. Them the breads have just sitting in the box for me. It's just Concords. I feel like they overdid them. I wear the breads every now and then. How many times did they re- How many times they retro Concords? Like it seemed like a bunch. And they still don't give us the ones we want. I want the DMP pack with the gold man. Right, the gold, yeah. We want those. You know, yeah. they'll give you give it to us with forty five on the back. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, you know what I'm saying? right, that's, right. That's crazy. Well, let's you brought some shoes for us to check out. So yeah, we're yeah. gonna let Grab you uh, go to the locker yes. and uh, show us what you brought what today. Time? Oh, I was gonna oh, like, oh, oh, say, what did we have? This is a trick, I was trick man. Say you dipped this oh, when you were in Japan. Oh, and everybody's on so No, it's not even that. I'm about to show everybody. So this is an SB. Oh, oh now. These are actually two different pairs of shoes. These are the Lands Mountain breads, or the Lands Mountain Jordan ones, and these are the black pair with the paint off of them. Okay. And this is the white pair with the paint. Oh, off. you okay. did the white. Okay. So yeah. I got the I got the black pair. Now the reason these are sentimental to me is I got in a bad accident in my Harley Davidson on my Harley wow. Davidson on these, and since the whole distress thing is like a big thing now. Ben Lee. Ben, yeah, I was about to say Ben Lee. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a. Uh, uh, a real distressing of a shoe, like Dave Jones fire. Like that's, that's an authentic yeah, right. distress. And I just I'm bought, good. and I ended up, I just bought those laces from. Um, I did a lace swap from one of the. Uh, I forgot the name of the spot, but they have like the old retro laces, oh, like mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. stuff. And I threw those in there. So yeah, man, that's one of my favorite pairs. Oh, yeah, let me go. Oh, yeah. oh. Ooh, a little motor motorcycle accident oh, joint. <laughs> you didn't get hurt too bad, did you? Right. Uh, it, was, it wasn't horrible. <laughs> it yeah. sucked though. Definitely got some scars for life from it. These are probably my ultimate pair. Oh man! Just because of the story behind oh, it. I know man. them. Let's hit, let's oh, hear that right, story. Right, let's hear that story. Let's hit you on Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah, I posted it on Instagram, but I don't know if a lot of people saw it. Um, nah, that's when you was in Japan. So right? yeah, I was in Japan with Bun B, and mm. he knew that Jordan once was my favorite, and we were just having a discussion. I was like, Cause we want, uh, we were gonna go by Kavini. Kavini, that's a store. It's mm -hmm. a fragment shop that they had, yeah. like a pop up. I was like, man, we were just talking about shit. I was like, yeah, I'll probably never get a pair of no fragment ones and shit, just two nuts and now. And he was like, shit, you can have these. I'm like, all right, bro, whatever. He was like, I'm dead ass serious. I'm like, all right, whatever. Mm -hmm. I just like ignored him. Like, for the, then the next morning, he was like, yeah. I remember oh, wow. when you posted that shit. Oh, so yeah, wow. I was on tour with Bun B in Japan, and yeah, he gave me my. Day. A pair of shoes that I never thought I would get. I think so, I hit Y'all, y'all, wear the I same shit. Yeah, Melo was mad. He was I in my dealer. Like, you see this nigga less? <laughs> so yeah, man, these, these joints. I mean, they just a pair of frags. Right. Just, they yeah. were for and, one and, of my favorite rappers, and, and then he gave them to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. So, Luckily, y'all wore the same size. Right? right. Yeah, yeah, we do. Oh, that's yeah, dope. Yeah, that's yeah. dope. That's so dope. It worked out like that. These last shoes, these are just like a personal favorite. Quarantine, so I wanted to bring something that oh, I actually oh, wear. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, shout out to Carrot. And this is my homie. And it's a black man with a croc. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just That's wanted dope. to represent for him, dog. I wear these probably more than anything at the crib. Walking I think the you dog. was one of the first people rocking uh, Carrots that I've seen. I mean, yeah, for, for it's been, I have a hoodie that I wear like daily and it's like 10 years old. So, yeah. like, it's a collab. I mean, that's just. It's the homie, man. And so are the Crocs that comfortable? I was just about to ask, like, are they that yeah. I mean, look, it's just easy. And these are like the, the um, these are considered, because I got a few pairs, but these are like the all-terrain Crocs. Mm. So you see like the strap is a little got bit yeah. nicer and this is a little bit different. Good. But uh -huh. nah, bro, these are the truth, man. You, you switch the out the out little pieces? Yeah, you like I got homies that, these come with that, but yeah. these are some ace time. These are like some ace time ones a homie yeah. made, though. My homie Zo, Zo made it. Yeah, man. So yeah. Dope. dope, dope, dope. Yeah, that's my that's three, man. All right. We talked about the whole New the Balance, New Balance. Yes. On, the, on, the, on the annual show, and yeah. and I told everybody, and New Balance had a great year. And that's all about all the new, most of the new shoes I have, outside of Sakai, because I've been buying the shit out of Sakai, mm -hmm. is uh, New Balances. Like, yeah. For sure. I just hate that certain New Balances are so hard to get. Yeah. Yeah. Like the um the John. The green ones, the uh, yeah, and the gray, they want eight hundred for them. I just can't. What? Yeah, yeah. Like I love the new balance. What, what pair is that? 
the uh, Jound. Oh, okay. Yeah, they sold out. Like, I was waiting. I was online. Had bots, everything ready. It just didn't work. Jeez. I love yeah. I love that that 540. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So y'all got to give me pictures. Joe Fresh Goods. <laughs> <laughs> the Joe Fresh, Joe Fresh, Joe Fresh Goods, Goods crazy. I missed out on them. I mean, we all did. You had to I be did. in Chicago. Yeah. yeah. yeah you had to yeah. be out there to oh, get them. Yeah. That's how it normally is. Uh, I had a question for you. Um, God damn it. What was the question, man? You just told us so much great yeah, information. <laughs> um, still, I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't even remember. Uh, we got somebody throwing me off. I forgot what the damn question was, man. Hey, I got one for you, though. Go ahead. How crazy was it when uh, when Bun told you about, you know, you was the first person for him to record, like, as a duet vocal? It's nuts. I didn't even think about that the whole time we was making oh, that project. Yeah. I never... I mean, I just figured that he did collaboration. I know he did collab albums with other people, but I forgot it was like production only. I didn't realize I was producing and rapping with him. Mm. And I was like, yeah, there's only one other person that did that. So that's pretty nuts. Bro, that's crazy. And it kind of sucks because now crazy. like everybody is comparing me to dude because we both light skinned and wear glasses and cuffs. <laughs> oh, man. And I'm that's just like, crazy. dog. Like, like, yeah, you can't even. I you don't want that pressure. I'm not a nigga that like to explain myself, but I'd be like, damn, y'all low key. Like, what y'all got? Light skinned racism? <laughs> like, all of, we all, I know I'm country and I wear glasses. I don't think we rap nothing alike, dog. Like, I know if I was rapping like Pimp C, Bun wouldn't want to do no album. Right. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, that's like, that sure. Yeah, so, you know. Let me ask you this question. I know you mentioned before we go, I know you mentioned the bots. How do you feel about the bots? Because you one of the people that's messing up. For everybody, less. I'm gonna no, let you know I, right no. Now. I just try when, like, I got homies with them. So when I really want something, if I can't get it through my connects, I'll be like, "Yo, homie, can you try for me?" Right. You know, like they put a little something on it, like look, 50, 60 bucks. Do they work? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. like mm-hmm. I think crazy. I hit with the Stoopsies. Okay, but he only got one pair. You know okay. what I mean? Because even tried to get something for him, and he was like, it didn't work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that shit, ones, that, right? that shit, yeah, it's yeah. still like a. It's still like rolling the dice, man. It don't seem like it's just that. It's not a shoe in. You okay. know what I mean? Like you're not gonna get the shoes for sure. Okay. Okay. And like it seems like it works with the like he'll have a ton of like general release shit. Oh, okay. But like yeah. anything like it just seems we'll like, like even like I tried with some Sakai's with him and it didn't work. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so 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 I remember my question now. <laughs> so um looking forward to this year and years beyond, what can we look for from less moving forward? Oh uh, man, just progression, bro. I don't really like Lay out a plan. I okay. just try to do it's better a than I did every before. every other week, y'all. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, they, oh, look. you put out music like that? I what? put out, yeah. Like, oh. I put out an album in November when we opened the store, and mm-hmm. I put out a, re- a project with Bun B. What, two weeks? The hardest working man in Houston, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, that's what's so And actually, cool. last year was a slow year for me. Like, as far as putting out music, I only put out, what, two EPs and two full projects. Oh, yeah. that's dope, man. That's hard See, my partner Larry June put out, like, four full albums, so it, yeah, it's... it's some dudes be working harder, you know yeah. what I mean? That's why I got to stay. They keep me motivated. Right. You know? so, so so you guys, y'all really are click tight, huh? Y'all underground rappers. I, I oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a community. Like, we all, like, my closest partner in, in fucking period is Freddie Gibbs. Like, I talk to him probably, like, four hours a day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, too and, like, um, he too dope. too dope. They, crazy. like, of course, the OG Bun, and then, you know, Spitter. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows our relationship. And then create, like, we all cool. Like, it's, it's a yeah. community, man. We all you yeah. just gotta look out for each other, bro. Like yeah. if we don't, you know, you wouldn't know about a lot of us. And that's and that's the good side of we never hear yeah. about that side, like yeah. brothers working together. Yeah, you hear like yeah. a lot of that yeah. negative shit because yeah. you know it's a bigger scene of certain parts of our music that's bigger. And then of course you gotta think, man, it's still powers that be that control these outlets and, and are gonna show mm. you specific things. You don't know, you. we don't know the faces behind none of these blogs on Instagram that stay posting like these two niggas beefing with each other. Yeah. Right. Mm. We don't know none of the faces, just hip hop something, something. And right. you see this nigga and this nigga on live pointing fucking Dracos at each other. Like, right. you know, mm-hmm. two 19 year old niggas or whatever. It, yeah. Or it's somebody talking about smoking their ops and all that shit. You don't. Yeah. When there's really more dudes working together to get the paper than anything, honestly. Right. Right. And that's so. what we need to see, and that's what yeah. we need to hear. So Absolutely. we appreciate you you sharing that. Y'all got anything else for this before we get out of here? I'm good. I mean, it was a great interview. Yeah, thanks yeah. for coming Stopping by, by my brother. I appreciate you having nah, me, man. Thank you yes, for coming. For sure. We got to come by the store. Always love my homie. Dope yes, stories. Sir, you know. Yeah, and so. save me a hat next time. <laughs> 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 well, that's, Leave. That's, uh, that's episode 16, and we out. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh,